Hello and welcome to your in-depth monthly horoscope for May for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Also, if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one consultation with me, please see the link below and you can check out my testimonials. If you'd like to ascend above the zodiac sign astrology and embrace a more serious understanding, you can do so in a very affordable way and check out my special offer for a 12-month forecast, character analysis combination, 30% off based on your time, date and place of birth. No two reports are the same and this will give you serious insights of the opportunities ahead for you and also a much greater understanding of what makes you tick. Hello Pisces and welcome to your in-depth monthly horoscope for May. As this month begins, we are all experiencing Taurus season. Taurus is very much a, a sign of stability. It has an appreciation of the good things in life. But for you, this is your third solar house. So this very much governs things like your neighbors, your siblings, your everyday exchanges, things like text messages and emails. It's a bright area for this collection of energy to be. It's the sun, which obviously is at the heart of all our existences. It's Mercury, the planet of talk and thought, so a very bright location for Mercury. It's Venus, which is how we attract things to us. And Venus loves being in the sign of Taurus because it is the ruler of this sign. So it gives us an appreciation. So your appreciation of your interaction with others is heightened, but also other people can be attracted by what you have to say. And finally, we have Uranus, which has been in this area full time since March the 7th, 2019. And all of these planets are creating a lot of potential possibilities. Not least in the first three days, the sun is combining with Uranus, which is creating an extra spark. Uranus is the planet of freedom, but it's also the planet of truth. It is the planet of change and independence. And when it's alongside the sun like this, it does suggest that if there is a relationship close to you, which is a bit clingy, you may feel that you need to push back a little bit and just seize a little bit of, of, of freedom for yourself. But also the third house can be about our everyday philosophies. So you could have an exciting exchange with someone at the start of this month, which does help you to look at something in a different way. Perhaps you're going to share how you feel in a more direct manner. Uranus energy is like a flash of electricity. It works very quickly. So this connection at the start of the month could be surprising, but it could also be very exciting in a positive way. Now, Mercury is linking brilliantly with Pluto. Pluto is the planet of change, and that's in house 11 for you. So it's all around your friendships, your longer term future. And if you like the non-tangible upside of life, so we're not talking about a big house, big car, and a, a well-paid job here. We're talking about the things that really bring us a great deal of personal satisfaction. That's kinship, connection to others. And a conversation you have in the first three days of this month can really be very heartwarming because it can help you to see that your connection to someone is strengthening, it's getting better. And part of this comes from the fact that Venus, so alluring in the sign of Taurus, is linking magnificently to Pluto too through to day seven. And I think that this can lead to some profound conversations or you can work out how you feel about certain individuals. So you can combine your intellect, your thinking, the third house, with your deep emotion, which comes through Pluto, but it could see a change. But then on the fourth of the month, Mercury relocates into the sign of Gemini, which it governs. So Mercury itself loves being in Gemini. We already have the North Node here, which is, if you like, the societal direction of travel which is asking us all to become more conscious of communication and to choose our words as carefully as possible. 
However, Mercury moving into this area for you can see you thinking about the emotion around your family situation. Also, it could see you thinking about actually moving or starting a business from home. Perhaps COVID restrictions have enforced you to actually work from the physical home, but you could be thinking in a much more entrepreneurial way over the next few weeks. And that's because Mercury is very enterprising. And in the fourth house, you may try to create more space. You may think, well, could I do something part-time and ally that to another role, work it around other responsibilities like the kids, if you have them. So it's an interesting uh, journey, Mercury, in the fourth house, but it can make us a bit more introspective. Just be conscious of that. But on the ninth, Venus moves into this area. And if you are living in an abode which doesn't quite cut it for you, you may seriously think about moving. But also you can think about beautifying what you already have. Now, if you have the perfect abode already, then it could be that you just want to change some things decoratively or do something with your garden. The fourth house is very much about our environment. So the more you can make that pleasing and calm and tranquil, then that's something you're going to appreciate. The third house energy at the start of this month is quite intense. It's quite quick moving and helter skelter. So this emerging energy in Gemini could give you a yearning to slow things down a little bit and just achieve a bit more peace and quiet. Now, it's also true to say that on the 11th, there is a new moon in the sign of Taurus. So a chance to really use your word power, your thoughts, your ideas to great effect over the following month. But it links with your co-ruler of Neptune. And Neptune is very much about the dreams that we have. It's less tangible, it's more ephemeral, it's more shifting. It can be quite hard to pin down the benefits or challenges of Neptune. But I think what this is saying to you is if you have an imaginative bone in your being, then it can really come out in the way you express yourself over this next month. And you combine your intellect to your instincts quite magnificently. So do set your intentions with that, uh, those qualities abounding in your situation. Now the 13th is a tremendous day for you Pisces, one that I've been really looking forward to sharing with you because your co-ruler is Jupiter. And I feel that Jupiter tends to get a lot more press as being the ruler of Sagittarius, which of course it is the only planet that governs that sign, whereas you have the two, the co-regents of Neptune and Jupiter. Jupiter in Pisces is very much about philosophies. It can be about religion. But it can also be about travel, of course, Jupiter, and expanding our horizons. But this is very much linked to the water element of your sign. So Jupiter moving into Pisces is your uh, astral bonus ball for this year. It's going to be with you for three and a half months. It's then going to come back just before the end of the year, and then it will be with you next year too. So this is delicious because usually Jupiter is pretty well just in one sign for 12 months each year and takes about 12 years to go through its cycle. So this is an unusual occurrence. And what this is going to do is give you a push to be more individualistic, to really focus on the talents that you have and to take them seriously. Now it is the case that Jupiter is going to be squaring up the sun from the 18th through to the 24th. So anything you do try could meet with some resistance from people close to you who may not quite understand what you're trying to achieve, or if you're trying to actually change where you physically live, it is important that you're not over optimistic and take on a rental or a mortgage proposition, which may be too burdensome for you in the future. But generally, Jupiter moving into your sign is really exciting. This is the planet of fortune. But what I would say is that Saturn is the planet of discipline. And that continues in a rather quiet, reflective part of your situation. But that's making you much more conscious of who you need to withdraw from, who's not truly right for you. So Pluto is the big vision. Saturn is the reality of the actual separation if you do feel you need to reorder some of your relationships. 
And Mercury and Venus are going to be forging actually very constructive links to Saturn. It occurs, occurs first of all from the 10th to the 15th with Mercury and then the 17th to the 19th with Venus. The things you're doing behind the scenes, even if you're thinking very deeply about who you are, what you want, where you want to actually be, who you want to really be close to, this can be a very profound time of introspection. And after all that buzzy, bright and more uh, vibrant energy that's come from the Taurus con uh, conjunction between Uranus and the Sun at the start of the month and also the new moon of the 11th, it's just saying to you that whatever discourse you have, the ideas you share, it really is down ultimately to how you feel. And your feelings are obviously important to you because you're a water sign. But sometimes you can get compromised or conflicted because you're trying uh, very hard to do your duty to help others. You can be enormously sacrificing. But sometimes your innate sensitivity does mean that you do need to withdraw and just work out what your life path is really about and from the 15th mercury actually goes into shadow it's not retrograde yet it's slowing down a shadow period is where mercury when it re uh, rewinds from the 29th gets to so next month june it gets back to 16 degrees gemini so on the 15th this month it's 16 degrees but not retrograde yet so it's slowing down so anything to do with thinking about a change of residency or improvements there or thinking and sharing about your emotional needs may see you a little more tentative even withdrawing that much more but with jupiter squaring with the sun from the 18th that could push you to venture out of that safety zone but once the sun moves on the 20th into Gemini it really is asking you to think about those strands of security peacefulness family interaction where you feel most at ease in a big way and this could trigger some changes for you particularly on the back of the full moon in Sagittarius of the 26th which is asking you to make sure that wherever you are in your life, in terms of those feelings of security, so whether it's informing your choices of work, where you physically live, or the type of relationships you have, do stay in touch with your feelings. Ambitions are all very well, but stay in touch with how it feels. On the 23rd, Saturn goes into a retrograde. Now, I've got to be utterly truthful about this. For the next five months, you may go through quite a transition in terms of your deeper psychology, particularly linked to anything to do with your past which didn't quite work out as you would like. And it may be that this can be a period when you feel quite isolated. Even if we're generally coming out of lockdown, there may be times when you just may want to uh, quarry yourself away and just think about the meaning of life. And this is going to be emphasized furthermore when Mercury does go retrograde on the 29th of the month. But what I would say to you, uh, Pisces, is Jupiter is going to give you a huge opportunity this year to focus on what's right for you. And even if you are considering other people's needs, feelings, and the support you want to give them, it is a good time now for you to really be focused on what is right for you. So the energy that comes from Taurus and uh, the energy of Pluto in Capricorn this month is asking you to find the stable structure that you can move forwards with inside of that structure that works for you at that deeper, personal, more sensitive level. Don't be hung up about it if you do need to withdraw a little bit, have time alone, pursue more solitary pursuits, because all of this can be very healing. It's helping to rinse you out. And once the sun moves next month into the sign of Cancer, and we have Mars in Cancer all this month for you, so it is giving you a lot of support when it comes to building those alliances with the people who really do understand you, the people who understand uh, you at a very innate level. Once the sun joins up next month with the sign of cancer, I think you're really going to start moving forwards. I think this is a kind of 
tidying up period really a lot of conversation at the start of the month a lot of thinking you may even treat yourself to some new technology or even a new mode of transport right at the start of the month but as the month goes on it does become a bit more inward and if you are going to play or socialize with people it's going to be with people you feel very very comfortable with thank you so much for joining me good luck and goodbye for now